Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tan and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about whether you should be getting the standard or the pro edition of Parallels if you want to do some Windows gaming on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And the answer to this is going to surprise you because this is going to be counter to all of the standard thinking about how to maximize performance on virtual machines. So if you didn't already know what Parallels is, it's a way of running the Windows 11 ARM operating system on the Mac desktop so that you can switch between them and run them in parallel with each other. We can even run games like Halo Master Chief Collection or Grand Theft Auto V or even a big open world game like Skyrim. If you'd like to find out more about how to get Windows games running through the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, please check out my Windows gaming tutorial. This is going to show you how to install a virtual machine like Parallels on an alternate method called Crossover, which is going to allow you to run Windows games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So once you've installed Parallels and you're configuring your virtual machine, in the hardware tab of the configuration of your VM, you're going to have the option to assign CPU and memory. Now automatically, Parallels is going to go ahead and assign half of your CPU cores and half of your RAM. Now paradoxically, if you try to assign more than half of your CPU and more than half of your RAM, you're actually going to run into worse performance. So in this Parallels article here, it says that if you assign more than half of your Mac's total RAM, it may cause severe performance degradation of both the Mac and the virtual machine. And basically how virtual machines work is that a resource like a CPU core is directly assigned to a CPU core within the virtual machine. So if you try to assign more CPU cores to the virtual machine, we're going to run out CPU cycles for the host and then the performance of the host and the guest are both going to suffer. And the same thing goes for RAM too. If your guest, which is the Windows 11 ARM operating system, is using too much RAM, it's going to basically choke the host and overall performance is going to severely degrade. So therefore, if you're setting up your virtual machine for the first time, it's going to ask you how you're going to use Windows on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And if you choose games only, then basically what it will do is to assign half of the CPU cores and half of the RAM of the computer. So I'm running this on my MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max chip. I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM and 10 CPU cores. So therefore it's automatically assigned five CPU cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is exactly half. Now, the only reason I'm able to assign so many cores and so much RAM is because I'm using the Pro edition of the software. And for most end users who just want to use Parallels for gaming, the most important features we're going to look at are these two lines here. So this is the virtual amount of RAM for each VM and the virtual CPU core count for each VM. So most importantly, we should look at the standard edition because the standard edition of Parallels can only assign 8 gigabytes of RAM. This is only a quarter of my system RAM and I can only assign four CPU cores, whereas on my M1 Max, I have 10 CPU cores and half of 10 is five. So I'm missing out on one virtual CPU core here. So therefore in theory, the best performance is gonna be given by the pro edition of the software, which does not provide that restriction. However, if you have a device which only has 16 gigabytes of RAM, then you can actually only assign eight gigabytes of RAM to the virtual machine. And therefore the standard edition RAM allocation is gonna be enough. Similarly, if you have a device with eight CPU cores, then you can only assign four CPU cores to the virtual machine. And so you only need the standard edition. And this is actually gonna cover most of the M1 chips. So for example, if you have the 13 inch MacBook Air from 2020, then you only have eight CPU cores and you can actually only assign up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you're never gonna be able to take advantage of the pro edition of Parallels. The standard edition is all you need. Similarly, if you're using the M1 Pro chip with the eight core CPU base model with 16 gigabytes of RAM, the most resource you're ever gonna be able to need is from the standard edition of Parallels. However, if you decided to buy the mid-range MacBook Pro with the 10 core CPU, or you decided to upgrade your MacBook Pro to 32 gigabytes of unified memory, which is only available for the M1 Pro or M1 Max or above, then in theory, you might be able to make more use of the additional RAM and additional CPU cores of the Pro edition of Parallels. However, I did want to put this theory to the test. This is because the Pro Edition does cost more money. So we're currently on the Black Friday sale. So it's currently on offer until the 1st of December, 2021. So the Pro Edition is normally $99.99 and the Standard Edition is normally $79.99. Currently it is on offer for the Black Friday sale. If you do make a purchase today, please make sure to click the link at the top of the description. If you do make a purchase, it'll help to support my channel and the work that I do. So what I'm gonna be doing today is comparing the gaming performance difference between eight gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of RAM, and also the relative gaming performance of running four virtual CPU cores versus five virtual CPU cores. So the way I'm gonna be doing this is running benchmarks between the five CPU cores and the 16 gigabytes of RAM configuration, and also manually setting the CPU cores to four and memory to eight, and then running benchmarks and then comparing them to see which one is gonna perform better. And I'm gonna be simulating whether the standard or a pro edition is gonna be worthwhile for gamers, and the answer is actually gonna be quite surprising. 
So the first benchmark we're going to be running is Geekbench 5. So on the left-hand side, we have four CPU cores with eight gigabytes of RAM, and it's getting a single core score of 1536 and a multi-core score of 5288. And on the right-hand side, we have five CPU cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. We have a single core score of 1543, which is almost identical within the margin of error. And obviously we have a larger multi-core score of 6432. So this is all to be expected. The more CPU cores we have, the higher the multi-core score. So here we're running the GTA 5 benchmark, and this is where the real performance starts getting a bit counterintuitive. So the four core CPUs with eight gigabytes of RAM is running substantially better than five core CPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And this is a little bit perplexing. I've actually run these benchmarks dozens of times now, just to make sure that I haven't made some kind of mistake. But it is very clear that either the four core CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM is going to perform better or the same as five core CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So here we're running the Hitman Absolution benchmark and we're actually getting virtually identical performance. So there's no real benefit to running the additional CPU core and the additional eight gigabytes of RAM in this scenario. At the end of this benchmark, the left-hand side has an average FPS of 27.54, whereas on the right-hand side, we have an average frame rate of 27.2. So it's virtually the same, where the four core CPU and eight gigabytes of RAM performs very slightly better. So here I'm running the game Halo Reach, and this is one of the cutscenes where I'm able to put the exact same footage side by side. And we can see that there is also virtually no difference in performance between the four core CPU and eight gigabytes of RAM and five core CPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Sometimes in the cutscene, the right hand side will perform very slightly better, but it's actually very close in performance. Similarly, during actual gameplay, there's maybe only a few frames difference between the two games. They perform very similarly at this level. In this scene, I've managed to get Skyrim Special Edition to load up the same save point. And here we're getting virtually the same performance. Here we've got the character looking at the same point in White Run, and there's only one FPS, two FPS difference. That might be accounted for just by the companion being in a slightly different part of the screen. It's very hard to say. So paradoxically, it seems like if we're running five CPU cores for a game like GTA V, we're actually getting worse performance than if we were running four CPU cores. I'm not a virtual machine expert, so I'd really love to hear if anyone has any theories about why this is. Currently, my theory is that if we set an odd number of CPU cores, we're gonna get performance degradation. So for example, in the manual section here, if we set the CPU core count to five, Parallels is actually giving us a warning and saying an odd number of processes may cause Windows apps to work incorrectly. So this could be a potential reason. However, if this is truly the case, then it's a bit perplexing why the automated setting for this sets my CPU core count at five, if four is gonna be more stable and offer more performance, especially when it comes to real world gaming. So it seems that paradoxically, running a smaller number of CPU cores might work out better for gaming or it might make very little difference. And for most games, they're not gonna make use of the extra allocation of RAM as well. And having eight gigabytes dedicated to Windows 11 ARM is probably enough. And it just seems that the conclusion is that the standard edition of Parallels is gonna be enough for most people, even when we're running something like the M1 Max chip, which has so much RAM and so many CPU cores. It feels like it could be a waste of money to pay for the pro edition of Parallels if all you're gonna be doing on it is gaming. The frame rate difference is gonna be negligible. I've only managed to run a limited number of benchmarks and I would find it very interesting if other people could help to run benchmarks to see if there are any Windows games that benefit from 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight and the additional CPU core as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.